Hey everybody, welcome to the D. Louise book series. I'm Christina, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A-D-E-L-U-I-S-E. And before we get started, please hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe. It would really mean a lot if you would um, hit the thumbs up for me. Um, today we're going to talk about peak performance in Shapes of Grey. And uh, Mr. Cohen comes aboard and he's He's very confident in his abilities and strategy and stuff. And he comes to a board to prepare the Enterprise, to have them practice in war games for the board. And I was thinking, gee, we could use some Seven of Nine and Captain Janeway here. They could tell you better than this guy. So Riker's going to go over and command the, um, the Hathaway. And he's allowed to pick his own crew. And he picks... Jordy Worf and Wesley. And um, what's up with Worf building the model ship? We never get back to that. Um, and he's bringing Wesley over so he can get um, more experience in the field type situation. And um, Riker understands that he's going to lose, but he's hoping he can get some brownie points with the Kalana guy by challenging him a game to that, whatever that thing is, that strategy thing. And then Troy and Pulaski encourage Data to challenge the guy. And they totally believe that Data's going to win. Uh, but Riker loses after 23 moves. And then they go over to the Hathaway. And the Hathaway is really kind of sort of dusty, kind of. It looks like there's cob. Before they turn the lights on, it looks like there's cobwebs and stuff hanging from the ceiling. It just looks. Uh, is it supposed to look like an in between? of Star Trek original and Star Trek Enterprise is supposed to be in between because um was that no because the Federation was before that I was trying to think of Scott Bakula's Enterprise was that was the first one right or was all right whatever you guys can help me out with that so um Riker make when Riker goes to make his announcement on the Hathaway thing that is the whistle from the old Enterprise. I'm totally believe that's the whistle from the old Enterprise. You'll have to let me know. And again, um, Pulaski's totally up to getting data to challenge that guy. So Worf, decide, Worf comes up with the idea of making the false hologram so that um, the Enterprise thinks that the um, Romulans are coming at them. Wesley fakes an excuse to go back to the Enterprise and get the secret weapon. And Data does the challenge and he flunks it totally huge big time. And he loses his confidence and he goes back to his room. Total human behavior here. I defeated, I failed, I need to figure out what's wrong. And, um... Troy goes in to talk to him, and Pulaski goes in to talk to him, and it just, and uh, then they switch to the to the Hathaway, and Riker learns about Wesley's deception, and he likes what Wesley did. He thinks it was good. So, Pulaski's talking with Data, Troy's talking with Data, so then they go to Picard. You need to talk to Data, because you're the one person he will listen to, he's not listening to us. So he, you know, because like, what? You know, at a measure of a man, Picard spent all this time proving that Data was a sentient being. And now he's like, well, he's a machine, he's an android. And they're like, come on, he's Data, go help him. So Picard goes and helps him. And um, Data tells Picard he made a mistake. And that is a human emotion. It is. And um, he, he wants Data to tell him how to do with Commander Riker and Hathaway. He tells Data, you can do everything right and still lose. That is life. It's true. Life can be very, very cruel. Um, and Picard tells Data to come to the bridge, leave his cell... Doubts in his quarter. He needs him on the bridge. He needs him. 
So they fall for the pretend Romulan ship thing. And then the Ferengi had been in the area and they show up and they're like, ooh, why are we fighting over this ship? Why are you fighting with your own ship? Um, but because they're locked in the computer simulation, they can't fight back. So, um, and I'm good to see Mr. Armenian Damon back. And um, the, the Ferengi decide that it's, the Hathaway is valuable. So they form a plan to fool the Ferengi, um, and it works. And the Colram guy goes another round with Data. And this time, um, Data went in to make a, he changed his thinking to make it a stalemate. And um, he wins or does the stalemate thingy. And Colram leaves defeated and frustrated and he's all up in the air because he was so confident that he could never um, lose. Shades of Grey. Lord. Is this an episode or what? Um, Alright, we gotta talk about this for a few seconds. Uh, what is that stupid machine? Did you see that machine when it comes up again? Uh, we'll talk about that. Um, so Riker's on the planet, and it looks like uh, it looks a lot like the planet, the icky planet. Um, remember in Star Trek Voyager, uh, it was Janeway, and I th I think it was um Chakotay. They turned into those creatures. Or was it? Uh, Paris. I forget. I know it was Janeway, and, and they turned into those icky, slinky ugh, creatures. That's what that planet looked like. And, um, so, they were gonna beam, um, Riker to the Enterprise, but the Enterprise computer says, ah, ah, he's got some stuff in him, he can't filter it out. So, Pulaski goes down, she investigates, they go back up, um, and we get to see Chief O'Brien, who's listed as the only guest star in this episode. Well, you know, they really should make him, and I will probably complain about this the entire seven seasons, that Cole Meany should have been a series regular. Um, and alright, yes I know, Deep Space Nine. Um, and, uh, so they get him up into the uh, sick bay, and Pulaski says it's an unknown microorganism has invaded Riker and it's affecting the sciatic nerve. Lord have mercy, I know that nerve, and it's working and it's gonna reach his brain. And I don't know why, but my brain went this way. And I was waiting, was LeVar Burton the only name? like, name when this started. I know Patrick Stewart was a name over in uh, England. And Jonathan Frakes might not have been... I know he was guest star and stuff, but um, his wife was a bigger name. At this point, Luke and Laura ruled the world. I mean, come on. Who didn't run home from school to get that episode of General Hospital with Luke and Laura and the Ice Princess and Anna Devane and Robert Scorpio and all that stuff. And it'll never be that good again. But, um, so I don't know. So I'm wondering, because Roots wasn't that, I mean, it was all right, over 10 years prior, but still, LeVar Burton was still a name name, right? You have to let me know. And please hit the thumbs up, please. Um, <coughs> so, um, Jordy and Data go down to the planet after having it. <coughs> Sorry. Um, go down to the planet to try and find what infected Riker. And um, they they find that thingy. And it, does it look like a leech to you or a purple something? And some of the notes in this episode was that they were low on funds, so that's why it's a clip episode. And I think it's one of the only clip episodes of the series. And I was also wondering how LeVar Burton and Brett Spinner felt walking around in the icky water. And if you look, 
in the scene when they go down to the um, planet, you can see it, it. If you look and like between Brit and, and LeVar Burton, you see the hose with the water. Um, but uh, so they take it up to Pulaski, that purple thingy, and um, she said the Mykonos is is mysterious and she can't figure out what's keeping it alive. She can kill it, but if she kills it, then she kills Riker. And have you seen that pillow? What the F is up with that pillow? That is no neck support pillow Riker's laying on. They could have gotten a better pillow. They just could have gotten a better pillow. And that machine with the... What were they going for? What were they going for there? What were they... I... Um... And do you think this was a good episode to be a last episode of the season? I think Peak Performance might have been a better episode to be the last episode of the season. Um, but, <coughs> um, and I love the, the Riker Troy moment. Um, he says, you of all people should, he, he, know him that he likes to joke and stuff and that facing death is the ultimate test of character who writes this stuff who believes this stuff facing death with dignity what do we war facing death with honor come on so i mean he's holding hands with troy and they're making lovey dovey at each other and he's like eh, and his eyes fiddle back in his head and he goes off and she stands there. She's literally standing there. She doesn't scream help or somebody or doctor. And she just stands there. Yes, the machines go off and alert the doctor. But like 10 or 20 seconds, she's just standing there. What the hell is she standing there for? And um, then they put him on that stupid machine. And I want to... Yeah. And the, the, the dreams start, and then we started wearing that stupid machine. It should come up again. Um, the hat, the way pretending to blow. You can, if you look in the desert, stupid, stupid thing, there's water running down in there. You can see it. There we go. There's that machine. What the hell were they thinking with this? And he dreams of meeting uh, Data for the first time. And then he dreams of Wesley and the girl issues. And talking with Guinan. I love the episodes with Whoopi Goldberg. And the Troy Riker conversations when he was possibly getting promoted. And when her son died and all that. And he's right that feelings make you human. And they did all this stuff to remind us of the relationship between Troy and Riker. But they never... The, why do the writers fight this the whole seven seasons? Why do they fight um, them? Why do they constantly put them on other characters? And uh, then they're doing the flashbacks. And I still don't understand why they made those people wear diapers in that episode. In, was it Angel One or something? Oh, and then there's Minuet. Some of these these memories are just cruel. And, um, with Tasha and all that stuff. And I noticed there were several clips with Dr. Crusher. So, was that a hint hint of what's to come? Um, and I just, the best part of the episode was the end when Riker is awake and he's like, Asking him, does he know who he is? And he goes, I'm Captain John Luke Picard. And Picard's like, yeah, me and the Admiral here. And Data's like, uh, sir, I don't think you have the ability to post me to Admiral. And the whole place just dies. Yeah. This episode was just, uh. But um, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not doing so good today. But um, I want to watch the next disc. And I can't watch the next disc until I did my review. Um, I wanted to have my memories fresh for this. So, um, 
please hit the like and subscribe and please hit the thumbs up, please. It means a lot to me. Um, I'm trying my best here. There's that machine. <coughs> Poor data. All right. Thank you. Please like and subscribe. And look forward to season three.